Okay, thank you. Oh, yeah. So, good evening. Thank you for uh, this introduction. We want to have a free speech, right? and uh, we want to Interact. have. Uh, We, we never did it before, we never talked together on these topics, and uh, that's a kind of freestyle talk, quite different to what we all expected as Vera. So and I think it, it's a kind of refresh. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> hopefully. Um, my person, I'm an architect, and I think I know how to code, so as one of the very few architects. So, and um, <clears throat> I started uh, 2000 at ETH with a, with a big research group. We uh, did a lot of experiments in different fields. We had uh, several uh, spin-offs in all these fields. And in around 2008, we had been done. So it was clear we scanned the area and it got boring. So especially with the, with the event, when we had a fully automatic architect getting a prize in an architect, anonymously getting a prize in an architectural competition. So and this is a kind of Turing test. So and then we can say, wow, we can make a machine driving an architectural office and we can show and uh, hey, hey, all, all the architects and so on. The, uh, this was a kind of turning point and we said, this, if this is like that, that you can uh, address all the expectations to architectural designs with machines, then we have to rethink the whole story of architecture. So especially because if you can make one building, it's, yeah, you can, with, I think for example, you, you can ask all the people on this planet how they would like to live, who would be their friends, who they don't like, how, and, and so on. All this shakes the planet, and it, it's one hour with the computing power of Amazon or Google, and you have a beautiful planet, and everybody is happy with that. So then we are done. So that's not the problem. And what we are facing today is towards this direction. This is what big companies try to do, is building information models and so on. So then we stopped all this stuff and we moved towards uh, theory. Therefore, these books and these reasoning about these things and so on. So, and uh, to summarize, and then it's your turn. <laughs> what we experience, and if you describe what is going on, the key, uh, the, the key uh, 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 phenomena with computing is that these bloody computers are so simple. So it's getting simpler and simpler. So, and all these interface design, human-computer interaction, this intuition, and, and so on. This simply means, don't try to understand what computers is. Computers likes you. They they understand what you're doing. So it's keep us aggressively stupid with this technology. This is what we are facing. And everything what you learn in and and technique and tools and so on is of no value in two or three years. If you're in, in a certain kind of programming and using a, a, a CAT system, whatever, the most sophisticated way to do these things, whatever you do as an engineer with computers in two or three years, it's obsolete. Because computers understand what you are doing. And we think it's, yeah, it's intuitive. And we know these things by heart. Yeah, this means we get stupid, more and more stupid with this stuff. So that's a challenging thing. And this is the key thing we understand what, what computing is about. It's this ease of use, which makes us stupid in reflecting what is going on. My first statement. Okay. <laughs> now, um, I come from a completely different um, um, background, and also, not also only um, um, scientifically, but also philosophically, because Essentially, I started with uh, law against my will, to tell you the truth. I really didn't like law at the beginning of my life. I really wanted to become everything else than just 
an, a lawman, but um, law is very akin to coding or to the um, into that um, question because uh, law essentially does not make anything else than just code reality. Now, if you have a reality where something happens and then you bring the real problem, real life problem into law, where it is coded into something else, different, because I mean, I don't know, you, you hate your girlfriend or she hates you and then she slaps you and in the end perhaps um, she kills you even, that um, is coded into certain rule or norms, um, a human being which kills another human being will be treated like etc. etc. So we make an abstraction um, and essentially we solve in law, law problems, not of course um, uh, real life problems. Um, so the, the coding and law are rather similar. The problem is that, or the problem is, I mean, um, what we can um, see is that law is, um, Amelia has um, pronounced the word um, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a phase of entropy. Law is on the one hand um, just exploding and it's, everything is, is, is become fruitful, full of law, um, so it's like a cancer. And on the other hand, it doesn't really mean anything at all. Um, because um, if you want to um, digitalize law, um, you lose the, the, proper con uh, the, the proper content of it. I mean, you couldn't, I mean, Lutgers um, talked about the architect, the machine, a machine that um, acts as a judge um, would be something completely different than a judge. Wouldn't be a judge at all. Wouldn't be a machine acting like a judge. It'd be just a machine. That's perfect um, for everything that is um, simple, perfect that, that is abstractable, but for every real life case it's just complete bullshit. Um, it's, I mean bullshit. It's not law. I mean it's interesting but it's not law. So um, that you ever could um, transform um, legal decisions, because legal decisions are always personal, concrete, specific, unique decisions in a specific, unique case with a personal responsibility and argument, etc., etc. I know that many of my um, law friends are working hard um, to go away from that, but uh, still it is like that. Uh, you can't really um, um, substitute any legal decision person by a machine. The problem is that we are really working hard. Um, on the one hand, law would be perfect on, as its relationship to coding. Law would also be per a perfect in a quantum um, perspective because law essentially decides what is undecidable. Um, that is the main function of law. No? Uh, it, if you have something that can be decided, you don't need a legal decision. It's in, it's decided in society. You bring it into the legal system, so that it is decided, but that decision, contrary to other decisions, is only a temporary one, because a legal decision is distinctive of other decisions in as much as it is always changeable. You can go to the next instance. And as long as it is in that one or the other, it's, not de it's decided and not decided yet. When you arrive at the last instance, the Supreme Court, then of course it is decided finally. But this is not any more law, this is politics. The, the, the Supreme Courts of all countries, I mean, my law friend, friends always are get, getting really angry when I say so, because they say, oh, you can't say that the Supreme Court decisions are in law. But yes, it's just politics, it's completely different. No? Um, law is, in fact, a procedure that is not, it's deciding things that remain undecided because they can still be reversed. No? The appeal, the possibility of appeal is really important. So, having said all that, and um, you see that it is really difficult in a world where law explodes, proliferates to an, ex uh, uh, to an extent where we really can 
compared to cancer, everything, everything is legalized, and no one knows what that, what, what it means or what this, what the outcome will be tomorrow. So law is really in a um, process of entropy. It is spread all over your sandwich. At the bottom, black box spread all over the sandwich. It's it's not it's everywhere, but nowhere really. Um, so this is the problem, and the, the example that Vera gave um, of the um, uh, maritime law or high um, sea, um, uh, for example, it is in fact this is the problem, because um, if you acquire a certain territory, this means also that you have the power over this territory. And what we are living at the moment is that vested as law, we have simply the exertion of power. So it, um, um, I'm, I'm not going to discuss the, the, the relationship of, of law and power. Law is essentially an instrument of power, etc., etc. But um, what is important for us, and um, tonight is important for us, that um, as long as this is the case, when law is just um, vanishing, we have the problem, uh, it's dispersed all over, we have the problem that, as is said in the title, um, privacy. Something is not, is, is not, be, has not become problematic, but has become difficult to find. It's not there and in danger, but it's essentially difficult to create. This is the reality, and we're trying to now tonight to explain what we think would be um, a possible solution to that. Is that okay? Yeah. <laughs> so I think that, that for, from my perspective, the challenge to um, to this uh, loyal or the society is that um, just with uh, with the connectivity of, of data and things. So if you record everything and it's it's now Amazon is selling and, and nobody really uh, no. cries out. Yeah, selling a camera for your bedroom no. to sell some uh, proper books. I, I don't know what they. Are. It's incredible. So and and, and they really sell that. <laughs> 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 so, not only that they talk and listen what you're talking at your home, they now they have an addition with a camera for your home looking. So, and nobody, and that, or everybody thinks that's quite okay. Or, 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 so, I, I, there's no outcry. This was completely different ten years ago. So, it was un, un, unthinkable this kind of stuff. So, what with with all these connectivity of data and, and, and principle and uh, this level of detail in data, and you talked about uh, entropy. Yeah. The problem with that is that you can make any reason. So by that you get insecure. So and you can't prevent that and yourself from that. So just the fact that you are traced, whatever you do, it's somehow there. And I can show you examples that even that you can fill that. So if there's a lack of, of some data and so on, the machines simply fill that, that is the most appropriate and, uh, and, and the most proper uh, uh, profile uh, to, to what you are doing, and it, it's continuous flow of data, what yeah. you are, and it's public. And even to institutions where you wouldn't really think of, I personally, for example, I travel with me, Minis, um, with a navigation system, Minis um, belong to BMW, and in a recent case in Germany there was a question about any criminal act, etc., criminal procedure, and of course BMW gave the court prosecution the data about when that specific Mini was at which place, etc., etc. But the user of that Mini probably as we all do, we say simply yes, I mean, we don't look at the general conditions of the use of our data. Uh, essentially, people know about our movies, uh, essentially people have competence to give 
data to other people, and it's, I'm not talking about states really at the moment, no, and that we simply don't know about. Um, another example would be um, the, the special tribunal for the Lebanon, um, where it is um, made case of the terrorist attack on the then um, former um, Prime Minister Harari. Um, the, the accusation there is against five people, um, none of them being in The Hague, but um, the accusation prosecution rests essentially on protocols of their handies moving from one point to another, and then you have a red um, network and a yellow network, and which handy moved at the same time to the same place, etc., etc., and from the analysis of these data, um, the prosecution follows, draws the conclusion that these people are legitimately accused. I mean, they don't ever have talked to them, never. They don't have anything else about their motivations, etc., etc. It's handy. Mobile phones essentially moving around. Um, at least, I mean, so legitimate it seems, um, such moving um, um, data that they install an international court in the head. Um, and it's not just I don't know the city of Zurich, or, or I don't know Aberdeen, uh, who do so. Uh, it's the international community who installs a court. So and then, it's just the, the amount of data available that you can find any reason. This is what entropy is about. So uh, the, the same story like, of course you are a friend within uh, five iterations with all the population of the planet. So, yeah. therefore you can have any reason for anything. So, so, so always you find arguments. Yeah. So, and if you face a kind of legal system which is hybrid, facing the same problem yeah. in itself, so, pff, it's simply not working any longer. So, that's the one thing. The other thing is that you're not safe by uh, that these uh, data, the, your traces are not um, uh, are not corrupted. Yeah. So simply change a little. <laughs> so no problem. Yeah. Especially for uh, uh, the established bureaucracies or uh, these uh, autocratic uh, setups we face. Yeah. So I was very so I was very engaged and so on with with, with all the. The stories how this develops with internet until five years ago. Then I was surprised until two years ago how fast this develops. Mm -hmm. In the last two years, I get frustrated. It's really getting bad. Yeah? Everything gets corrupt. They, they, they look at, so I can't find things anymore. Anymore, it's really getting worse uh, month by month. So it's a, it's a crazy setup and 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 and, and, and situation. So what I think and what we learned is, if computers get in making things so simple, which means we, the, the propaganda of these machines is that we have to forget to learn and to know what's going on. Therefore, it's not about, and at universities, it's not about teaching tools, it's about getting literate in these things. So and if you go there, and this is, I would like to give you two, uh, the, the two principal technologies which are necessary. So they, they are amazing simple. So and I, I show you that. It's cryptography, how, how this works with, in, in combination with communication. It's super simple. And then I show you these algorithms, how these machine learning, how Google and, and Amazon and, and so on, all the automatic cars they are working. It's one simple algorithm within the five lines of code. That's only, you only need tons of data. And the algorithm is super simple. So it's an intellectual problem to get there. It's not a technical one. It's, uh, it's not a, a, a problem of craftsmanship. It's an intellectual problem. And that's, I think it's a beautiful, it's a domain of architecture, fit these things. So it's, uh, in principle, it's a nice uh, uh, challenge. Says the architect. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you like, I can uh, show you how uh, these two things. 
<coughs> how cryptography and communication works, yeah? So you always think these are always Bitcoin and, and so on, all these cryptocurrency and so on. You think then you have these, these small Russian uh, math, math genius of playing all these games and so on. It's, it's, it's nonsense, yeah? It's simple, but complex. As computers are, and, and listen to Vera's talk, it's complex. Yeah, so that's it. So <laughs> even these O's and ones and these tools and so on, they are complex, but they behave differently. They think I like you. You, do, I, I understand. You can touch me, touch no, me. No. It's intuitive. No, look how sensitive I am. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> this is a propaganda, yeah. But it's complex. <laughs> So nobody's wondering that if I have my smartphone, I touch and I like my smartphone, and then I have a call to China. It's incredible. Nobody is, 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 is wondering about that anymore. So, if I, yeah, so or you can do whatever you want with these smart, uh, smart things. That's beautiful, and it's frightening in its simplicity. So and it's the same with cryptography. So it's, it's super simple. So now, what is this, for example, is an image of an <clears throat> here. This is uh, it's Mathematica. It takes too long to explain what it is about. So, <laughs> <laughs> so this is a random generator. So what is random? A random is a wheel with prime numbers. So it's a lottery of prime numbers. Yeah. Then you have pseudo randoms and so on. And this is how it works. So super simple. You put in a wheel of a prime number in diameter, and then you pack in another five prime numbers, and then you have a lottery, and look how these things work, <laughs> and make a trace of what they work. So in fact, it's, it's a kind of trace to the argument and the ratio of, the, of our old-fashioned world. It's, a, it's, it's making reasons without sense. It's always making reasons without sense. That's what it's random about. So the algorithm is super simple, and if you look at it, it's like this. Yeah? So now I have uh, 26,000, uh, or 260,000 uh, uh, random uh, uh, bits. So <coughs> um, I make that a key. So I say this key, I put that and so on, and here you see that it's 270,000, and it's really random, so it's half, and so on. You can see there's no meaning in it. So that's it. So you even can't find uh, that there is something. So it's really putting any reason by arguing, 20, uh, 270,000 times, arguing, 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 to the horizon. So and it's like an architecture, the perspective drawing. In Renaissance, it's the high point at the horizon. So you put whatever you like in any construction, any proportion what you have, put it to this point, and it's gone. It's not on this planet. So you leave infinity. You leave reason. This is what random is about. So now we take another picture. This is Clint Eastwood. <laughs> well. <laughs> so, Clint Eastwood. <laughs> so this is a kind of a reasonable object of our planet. Yeah. Yeah. Yo. More or less. Take a picture of you. <laughs> yeah. So, so it makes sense, and you can measure that. You can reason about that, and so on. So. <clears throat> Uh, so I put it as the same uh, same thing. So you can see here different numbers in 0.5 and, and so on. You can make analysis and so on. So now this turning wheel, it's this function. Imagine this function is mod modulor, and and I get a modulo of two. So if I have a modulo one to two, it's you can see here, it's 1. If I go O to 2, it's O. If I go 2 to 2, it's O. If I go 3 to 2, it's 1. If I go 4, it's O again. So this is real. Everything gets an O and a 1. Whatever I put in, 1,000, so it's O. <laughs> so, 
That's it, huh? Yeah. So, and now, um, look at the at our uh, at uh, Eastwood. Look at our key, our random thing, our horizon. At this, so this is our line of argumentation. Now and, and now look what is the encryption is. Takes a key plus a data modular two. Now what I did with the numbers here, do it with Eastwood and the key, and at these both, and turn them. So we get a, a, an interesting, uh, interesting lines of numbers. It's different from all the on, and if you look at that. It's random, huh? Completely different random, and it makes no sense anymore. So you can't see anything. The only way <laughs> to get it back is decryption. And decryption is <laughs> do the, the line of argumentation you have, 270,000 arguments. <laughs> do it again. And then you get him back to our planet. That's it. <laughs> so, well, yeah, the, the, the beauty is <laughs> that's it. <laughs> so there's nobody on this planet who is able to see that there is, or with another key, there is any other argument. So you simply have a certain line of argument. This argument is your ratio. If you don't give this line, follow uh, every argument of your line, it's nothing. If you have exactly this line of argumentation, you get it. And of course, there are other lines of argumentation to get any other picture of this uh, meaningful picture of this world. With the same encrypted uh, data. That's crazy. So on what you have is, and this is what the communication channel is about. You put any meaning, whatever you have, the light, what you're talking, uh, the pictures, <coughs> uh, the temperature, uh, uh, the traffic, the movements of passengers in subway, whatever. You put whatever you have, the centers of this world, put it to the horizon and get it back. Like in, in, in architecture, your model, um, a, a point, get it back to reality or in another size. Turn it in virtuality and so on. So you can put a picture and make it black and white. You can make this and that and so on. <clears throat> this is what cryptography is about. Communication is the, the very intense... <laughs> If uh, effort, technical effort, to keep track on your arguments, to really make sure <laughs> that what's coming back from Nirvana yeah. makes any sense anymore. This is what communication is about. Read Shannon. That's it. So that's my first proposal. I don't have a tutorial. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm completely um, uh, with you uh, at our start. That really is the point. The, 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 the difficulty is, in fact, uh, all cryptography um, works in exactly the same manner. The point is to have it as powerful as possible. But the point, really, for us, as we are also, as said, with the metaphor of light, is not that we don't have enough, but that we have an overabundance of uh, information and we have to structure that. That is the problem and um, everybody knows, I don't say everything, but much too much about everyone else. I mean, the problem is really, I learned that from my son the hard way, TMI, because when he asks a question and I explain, uh, after two um, sentences he says normally TMI, too much information. He just breaks 
the, the process. I don't want to know about that. I just don't want... I mean, he's intelligent, as you can see. Um, obviously, I, I don't want to know about that is the correct answer, because there is an overabundance, and for us, for us, being subject to all that um, information technology is exactly the, the basis of the problem. Too much people know too much, and we can't, I mean, we really can't escape that. And um, that's, uh, I mean, that's a dream of, of if, if you just live on, alone on an island. Um, but even there, I mean, it's just, it's over. It's just over. It's not any more a viable alternative. So everybody knows and knows everything about you if you, if he really wants, if they really want. And the, again, um, that we insist on that, huh? it's not governments that are the real problem. It's not states that are the real problem. They don't even have the resources. <laughs> um, everybody mistrusts states and everybody gives their data willingly to any, any shitty corporation if they just offer you, I don't know, one, one cent or one card or I don't know what. No, I mean, just give me the eye and you leave it and I was like, thank you very much. You know that. Hmm? So the problem is over abundance of these data and how we can deal with it. This is essentially our problem now. Because what does it mean? It simply means that all what Ludger has presented to you is of course a risk. Of course it is a risk if others know about you and if you can construct data, and you can easily. I mean, if at any point of your life, any prosecution comes to you and says, we can prove that, just be really, really scared. And they can prove anything. And if they want to, that's the, 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 the basic problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but this is, this is the way out, huh? Exactly. So, <clears throat> you can encrypt your digital traces. Exactly. This is what this story is there. Exactly. And the interesting thing is that the propaganda of, of IT and all these tools it says it's complicated. Yep. You need to be a math genius. Yep. You don't need to be. And you don't need supercomputers for that. Just to put your traces somewhere else, not on this planet. Yep. Not traceable for anybody. Not decryptable for any, anybody and so on. So then there are always these, these uh, 128, 260 keys and so on. You don't need them. Simply make these kind of things and that's it. And you don't need supercomputers for that. And you don't need to be a genius. Simply one line, mod, turn your bits and that's it. Yeah. Very interesting. So that's a, that's a kind of literacy <laughs> which is important that it's there. Yeah. So you can run it on $30 computers, no problem. So it's there. So the other, the other story is <laughs> how to tune things. <laughs> yeah. So this is what you're facing. And this is machine learning. And this is similarly simple. So, that's, that's, uh, so I want to show how this works. So again, to show how simple this is conceptually. And it's, there's nothing else outside. This is my strong hypothesis. Of course, all these researchers, they make their, 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 um, <clears throat> their careers if they if define another method of machine learning and so So I think there's nothing else there. It's yeah. like the infinitesimal calculus, it's one calculus, and this is, and of course, this walk around how to write these things and so on. After, yeah. after a long term, it's one. So and there's a one geometry. And what we are facing is a new digital geometry, and there's one. And this is a strong indicator of how this work will work and work out and, and so on. Of course, you need a lot of uh, research scientists and they have to agree on certain things, how to name it and so on. The principle is uh, this. So I didn't see different things yet. That's very important. So just to make it simple, it's an autonomous car. So we have a green, yellow, red light, it's numbers. It's always about numbers. You have to crunch numbers, yeah? Bits. So, 
So and this here is an event. Now this one here. One line is, a, is an event. So this means if the traffic light is green and the speed limit is 50 and my speed is 10 and the brake is zero and my gas is 20, this is good. So now you can add anything connected on this planet to that. So you have one, no problem with, with computers. Take one million of these, of these events, your radars, of the, the radars of the, of the other cars, the radars of the other cars in the other cities, no problem. The, the alcohol you drank, your, your account, and what, whatever. Yeah, the, the voice, what, you struggle with your wife last, last, it's the last day, whatever. Yeah? So it's a parameter. So take this thing 50, sec 50 times per second. So this is the scenario. Take the world 50 times per second. So, and then say this was okay or not. So, and then you see these all, these all are events. So I only put, put some 20 of these events, they are all okay. So, <coughs> uh, <coughs> this is a kind of <laughs> illustration of that. So it's my, my driver. So this is a car. So if the <laughs> <laughs> traffic light is I red. This is okay, yeah? So, <laughs> so for example I can <clears throat> I can have this is for example all the events I had. So this was my day. Huh? All okay, no no accident, yeah? So whatever. So this is how it, the data I need. It's important to understand that it's data and it's meaningless. So it's, it's, it has no sense. And you don't try to understand what driving is and so on. You simply say it's okay. Like Tinder. Okay, last night, blah, 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 blah. blah. That's it. No, you don't before, have to. You say before. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's no meaning. That's, that's very important. And it's no engineering. It's super generic. And you can. Do whatever you want. Simply say it's okay. It's not. I like it. Don't like it. So if I have a crash, it's bad. Huh? So no. don't do it. And again. So if it's not a crash, do it. And so on. Now this is the driver. So this is the driver, and it's a mess of data. Yeah. So this is brain. So it's a random brain. So you wheel. This is this wheel. We we discussed that. This is the brain. It's a, it's a random brain, so it's mixed, so it's no meaning, so no understanding of anything. So this is a, a tomograph, a sliced brain, so it's random noise. So now you put this brain to uh, and and to driver school, train it. Now the brain looks different. Somehow adapted. This is a sliced version of it. So imagine, no reason what driving is, no um, which parameters you use, whatever. So simply take whatever you get, put it in there, make a, make a bigger brain, but you don't need a big brain for that. And that's it. And now this is how it works. Huh? You have a certain situation. You say, what is if there's 54 uh, uh, speed limit, you drive 70 and the light is green? Yeah? And you ask, and the machine, the machine says you have to brake a little. He never seen 54 as a, as a speed limit. So now you can, for example, say, put it to red. Oops. Why is it? Oh, shit. <laughs> I don't know. So we should not. So it's working. Huh? <laughs> okay. <coughs> it should break uh, st a start, or if you have uh, it's green. That is, that is bad, huh? Or oh, did I say the road? Right. Right. Um, uh, small. 
here, here. Yeah, what is what to do? So now, if I if it's twenty, break. If it's green, guys, that's it. So, and this is the, <laughs> the way how it works is that if you train, for example, at one million kilometers. Driving, good driving or bad driving is good if you have uh, bad driving as well. You have these events, don't need to be complete, these these numbers. And the question is always leave things out. And then he says, most probably it's this. Most probably it's this. So you need very few indicators of parameters to fill the rest. So, for example, with a, with a machine, if you have sensors, take the sensor values and ask for the actuators. That's it. So, because there's nothing than sensors and actuators, so getting things to, to the horizon, to infinity, and getting it out, <laughs> that's it. And there's nothing more. And it's working pretty well. Pretty is the key <laughs> word. Because I love the, the optimism <laughs> that Lutke is about uh, his machine learning. And um, uh, I just use the, uh, the, the moment to, um, um, <laughs> to say that um, I'm really fascinated at the uh, intense um, research on the responsibilities um, of machines and of robots. And the European Union is spending billions on research on that. I don't want to offend anyone, but really not necessary questions. Because I can tell you, uh, from a legal perspective, it simply doesn't matter. We would never treat a machine as a deciding body. Because if the machine were a deciding body, we would say, who constructed the machine that it decided like this or that? And we would have exactly the same responsibilities of the constructors of the machine. And the constructors of the machine would never be able to say, oh, but you know, my machine learned, etc. Et we don't care. There must be someone responsible and some human be responsible. So a criminal liability or a civil liability of the machine will never ever happen. It's no question about that. Because in the end, and that's exactly the problem that Amazon has, for example, with its drones. We will use drones to bring your packets to your center. Just do that. Just do that. I'm just waiting. I'm just, me, personally, I'm waiting for Amazon to use drones to bring me the packets. And then one of the drones falls on the head of someone. They will close down. It's very easy. It will cost millions and billions. Yeah, but but, no, no. I, but I don't believe. Uh, so yeah. th this is the this is the turning point. So I, I think yeah, um, we will have this and, and uh, with with the self driving cars. Yes. And I don't think people people will accept that. And the the, the argument turns in, 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 in recent years. So well, and that's we'll that's not the problem. So the interesting is like like this um, like this uh, automata uh, this touring auto uh, uh, architect. So it's turning like that. So the, the, the interesting thing is, we, it simply will work, and it will work better than with human. Uh, uh, and uh, if a house breaks down, that it your will machine not. Yeah, has but it will not break down. But <laughs> that's that's what the statistics are saying. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. And self-driving car. No, 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 no. And in effect, and, and we expect you to control it. So, I mean, that's not a self-driving car. And it won't break down. Of course, things break down. If yeah, they course. can break down, they will but break down. Yeah, but if a computer or a human being is there. Yeah, but the probability of accidents, car accidents and so on will decrease. Yeah, of course. But and there will still be. Yeah, yeah there will still be. Yeah, shit happens. And people will, uh, because there is no reason to do things. It, and you it's really like getting a kind of infrastructure. But, but Lutger, do you really think that there is a machine killing, I don't know, your mother, your wife, your son, and no one goes to prison? <laughs> yes. No. 
<laughs> Never. <laughs> yeah, but with what is with knives or with uh, yeah, with but guns no and so on. Yeah, but so if, if if the machine explodes and kills your wife, son or mother, then of course the constructor of the machine goes to. Uh, I mean, that's what the but the discussion is to we get uh, on a probabilistic uh, level. So of course things happen. So and as we experience that there will be less accident. But that's not the, that's not the exactly. problem. Exactly. So the interesting thing is <laughs> that, is possible. that we are currently facing exactly. these kind of algorithms yeah. as an offense. Yeah. So they are, this is what, what we have with this raster fun. So they, exactly. they go, go to uh, with, with, with criminological yeah. things and so yeah. on. They argue yeah. This is the most probable way what you did, so therefore yeah. you are a murderer. Exactly. The interesting thing is that people take that seriously, that they so incredibly happy yeah. that self-driving cars are will be uh, coming, uh, which personally I don't understand in any way, but that's not. just like having a, um, uh, a computer getting drunk for me. I mean, that's just not fun. <laughs> but, um, um, the, the, the interesting thing is that really people are so happy about the yes. automation of that, so yes. that they really are so happy to push their responsibility away to someone else. And we will see, I'm deeply convinced that, we, but the possibility and the happiness of people is in fact a real danger. And, and this exactly that is possible is the problem. No, what I want to show is that it's not complicated. Yeah. It's complex. So it's complex to understand. Therefore, and I don't believe that there is a way out. So all, yeah. all these autocratic and the bureaucratic uh, uh, institutions, organizations, and so on, using this. And they will use it, and it's not for our good. Exactly. So because they're filling the gaps, and then they, they force you to behave. Everybody's lazy, and yeah. of so, course, we, there we agree completely. So, <laughs> so the interesting, what I want to show is yes. <laughs> that's not a big show. Yeah? Exactly. So therefore, you simply and you see this on my my small computer, and so you simply do it by yourself. Yeah. So my hypothesis is, and this is what now we can go to exactly. the, to the citi citizenship is take the things. <laughs> And this is what, what we, for example, are doing at, at research these, these years. Take these machines to behave like Google. Google. So simply yeah. crawl, so we have 20,000 floor plans for architects a day, 50,000 pictures a day. So we have uh, some 6,000 6, different news articles a day and so on. We, we process it like this driver on, on a, on a um, Raspberry computer. And this gets organized so that you get a, a very nice, so it's a kind of circulation of all these things yeah. and get organized and get an overview of what happens of the day. So you have the, the world at, at, at the table, at the dinner table at Absolutely. night. And it's organized and orchestrated like these autocrats are doing it with your US customers. And you can do it by yourself. So the, 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 the nice thing is, first is you can get, you can sit and wait, things coming. You don't have to run and to be fast and behave. That's the first thing. You can sit and let your mach the machines run. And you get complete opaque to the internet because you like everything. It's really so <laughs> to escape that. I mean, most of us um, um, perhaps would prefer to escape it, but it's really difficult. There's a nice uh, book about obfuscation, giving you tips how to change your face, not um, to be face recognized by all the machines on the road, etc., and how to um, uh, cover your um, um, traces in the internet. It's really, really difficult. I mean, you really have to spend a lot of time of your day to obfuscate. Um, so this is the, the main problem, and the problem on the other side is, of course, that with all these data being collected, that the possibility, the probability that they will be collected 
I mean, even without um, um, a manipend, of course, correlations with big data, the more data you collect, the more probable it is that there will be correlations between some of these data that don't have anything to do with that. If you look at your um, hand with your computer, you can, so there's a nice website, spurious um, um, uh, correlations by an American guy about, I don't know, correlation of um, the, the, the Australian wool produ production um, correlating the 99% 7 to the um, uh, suicide rate in New York, etc. I mean, no question about that. So, the, we can't escape the collection of data except at incredibly high cost and the risk of that to prove the contrary because everybody will say, I mean, even DNA analysis sometimes is tampered with. If you know about criminal justice, if someone says DNA analysis, the case is dead because the judges will not hear no. This could be, in the meantime, it starts to change a bit because the, um, the capacity to collect DNA analysis is so huge, has become so huge, that in fact it is a real probability, a possibility that I can touch Ludger and then touch the micro and they say, ah, oh, you touch the micro because this is, in the, in the meantime, we can use that, we can prove that. So it is not anymore, not in the heads, but in the in reality. But the fact is that we're simply, I mean, we're victims to such possibilities or probabilities. That is yeah, but the, reality. Yeah. So what the way out is, <laughs> yeah. do it yourself. Yeah. So do it by yourself. So and what is the face and privacy and so on is so you with, with playing the Google game yeah. privately, which means you get a million faces in parallel. This is what face is about: speaking through a mask, and, and you go to Venetian Carnival and so on. All these stories. So you get digital faces, a million, ten million if it's necessary. No problem, technically. Yeah. And it's just these algorithms, it's yeah. nothing. So by that, you drive these external en uh, uh, entities crazy, because you are opaque. Yeah. And the way you sort your data, you, uh, you get channels to your interest and so on, how to, how yeah. to rotate things and so on. This is behind, uh, the, the, so you rotate that, you rotate the world. You have a million faces and you are organized. This is your economy. And by that you are able to, to talk uh, politically. So this is what I think you can do with content. Yeah. To get uh, the, the way against corruption of your traces. So for, for example, the face recognition with his old face, but it's uh, not, not important. We have only one. Exactly. So, no. <coughs> <laughs> so this is not this. So I, this is public and this is transparent, <coughs> and this is done. But to to be to to fight against um, or, or to prevent yourself against corruption of these things, so that somebody says, "Yeah, I put my DNA there, exactly. and uh, you 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 did this and that." That's the risk. No, I mean nobody so, really is conscious of that, but this is really the risk. I mean, if we read about cases, etc., etc., this has been proven. Shit has been proven. It's really easy to prove shit. It's really easy to do that. And the problem is, what do we do? We, Lutgen and I, what do we do if someone accuses us? And I mean, we're arrived in a world where the accusation itself is already destroying your life. I mean, so what do we do? And the problem is we, at the moment, we don't really have a defense, right? I mean, oh, I know I'm a friend of Lutger's, <laughs> ha ha, you're a friend of Lutger, that's the reason why you lie. Um, but we, yeah, that's, that's the point, no, but we have hard data, <laughs> the prosecution has hard data, see, look at that, and that's what we propose. Right. I, I think 
what you can do <coughs> is you can trace your physical data, for example, your heartbeat, your GPS, uh, and, and, and so on. You trace that. Yeah. And you can encrypt that, yeah. as I showed you, and put it out of any access. So, and then, if you set up a system like, like Bitcoin, for example, so you can share it, encrypt it, so it can't be corrupted, then you have a kind of digital witnesses of these traces without giving these traces to your witnesses. That's inter interesting. You can, tra you can have a physical track. That's you one, can, right? That, for example, these are the sensors available, so yeah. take them, encrypt them, so nobody can read them, and then share it with your witnesses, crisscross, and put that into a chain so that these things can't be corrupted. I mean, so. <laughs> you, you seem to be skeptical. What it means in simple words is that if I say tonight at 10 o'clock Ludger Hovestad was in, I don't know, Innsbruck doing this or that because we have his DNA and we have, I don't know, his credit card information, etc., etc., and we have his card. No, no, just wait. I can prove with the data of my um, item or device that I have on me, which is um, encrypted, that I can not be, have been there for the simple reason that, you see, my heartbeat, da, 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 and my, my, my location, it cannot be that at that time I was at that place. The problem, as you see behind that, is and that's the reason why we are talking about encryption, you're delivering very much of your personal life. Very much. I mean, almost every indicator of your personal life, where, when, your heartbeat, etc., etc. So you're not interested really in delivering that. <laughs> it's not necessary. Huh? But if it is necessary, and that's the point of digital citizenship, I mean, what exactly would the state do? A state would protect its citizens. That's essentially what... And, and I'm, I came here to Vienna with an identity card which is not anymore valid. Nobody, fortunately, does care about that because I didn't show it any, at any time to anyone. But um, the point is, the identity card serves exactly that purpose. I am this person, I am allowed, etc., etc. So this is what a citizenship normally in the, in the analog world would mean. I am this person and I am entitled to this or that. Now, digitally, if we're entering the continent of data, we don't have any more a territory. So we need identity not linked to territory. And this exactly would be a digital citizenship. Meaning a guarantee that you have been there at that point of time. Because, I mean, as digital and quantum and physics, and, and physical as it can be, our lives still are defined by time and space. And accusations of prosecutions are still, or I don't know, any court or legal claim are still defined in, in, in space and time. So this is what we propose. So and this is that's that's it. Huh? So what uh, what, Very we, easy. what we <laughs> think you have to you can't complain with the aristocratic uh, oligarchic systems and so on. You can't complain with the bureaucrats because they all need reasons. So on, and they are somehow they, they are fighting that. So you have to do it by yourself and organize. We have to get another kind of uh, communities and, and, and so on. And we have to understand these, uh, these um, uh, te technologies. And they are not this complicated. You simply have to do it and understand what the principles and what the challenges are. Therefore, we, say, we, we talk about uh, uh, literacy. This is what you have to know what's going on. So it's not a, it's a direction in thinking how to develop that. 
and how to cultivate a kind of uh, democratization of internet and, and data and so on. So this uh, this continent. And we've encountered, of course, criticism as regards um, citizenship. Couldn't we do that privately, etc., etc.? If Amazon can and Google can, no, we can't because in international law, and this is the problem in international law, any country of the world having an accusation launched by a prosecution in international law, you, we as human beings are non-subjects. We are not, we are inexistent. Only states are existent. So it is very important if, for example, the Austrians say, we are, don't laugh. <laughs> you've never been, you've never been in detention, my dear. <laughs> I can bring you there. They, I, I can promise everybody here. Just challenge me. I bring you into detention. It's very easy. Really, very, sure, really very easy. You, you will be really scared. Uh, so if the Austrians would say, you would be no part of the argument. The Swiss or any state agency could argue. So it is really important in international relationships that there is a state, a citizenship. Because we don't exist. The human beings are objects of international law. Remarkable as it is, but it's still like that. We are the objects. We, we don't exist as, as subjects. So it is important. A private company could never bring forward an argument like that. Never. Which is a bit scary, but that's the reality. And I mean, really, and we can only repeat, really be distrustful of all the stories, what has been proven of people. In any context, it's really very easy to produce that. Really, really easy. Any idiot, I mean, yeah, yes, any idiot could produce that. <laughs> Even a prosecutor. <laughs> <laughs> Don't think that. <laughs> I think it should be clear that uh, that that uh, we need to get a citizen. Yeah. We need to be literate. Yeah. We have to organize ourselves as citizens, yeah. and we need a state equivalent to uh, to get um, a, a safe a, a legal yeah. uh, system and to yeah. to develop that on global uh, 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 space to I democratize uh, internet. Something like that. Yeah. This line of the of uh, well, cent our central argument certainly would be privacy does not exist as a right. Privacy must be acquired. If you depend, I mean, just my final sentence would be: Don't trust anybody who talks about human rights. Human rights can are more and more used by states to do with us whatever they want, and we have to acquire our position to protect it. It's not there and then someone infringes on it. It's simply not existent. It's not anymore there. We have to acquire it. And yes, we need states for that. Um, yeah, minimally, but we need. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 